So if you have a, a parabolic equation, you lose your characteristic lines. Okay, so you actually don't have any particular characteristic lines for that equation. In uh, the navier stokes equation, you actually have a mixture of both, right? And analyzing that characteristics only makes sense when in regions where this term is much less strong than the advection terms. So basically, in most of the regions, and if you look at a high Reynolds number of flows, in most of the regions outside the boundary layer, the hyperbolic terms, which is the first order derivative terms, dominates the second order derivative terms. And you can still make sense out of characteristics. Yes? What, why we don't? Because there is no particular direction on which the change of u can be solved using an ODE. Right? So the reason we have characteristic lines is because if you follow the solution along this direction, for this particular equation, you will have du dt equal to zero. I mean, the, the, if, you, if you trace along this line. For general uh, equations, actually, you can, you can also add some terms over here. You can add terms over here. You can find out along the lines, you can solve the value of the PD using an OD. For, and that technique only works for hyperbolic equations. It doesn't work for parabolic equations. It doesn't work for elliptic equations. So we don't have the concept of characteristic lines for these type of equations. All right. OK, so inside the boundary layer, because the, the velocity changes so much so rapidly, this term actually, the second order derivative, starts to be as important as the first order derivative terms. And inside the boundary layer, you don't talk about characteristics. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, that's for this equation. Another type of uh, uh, place where you specify these different boundary conditions is structural mechanics problems, where if u is deformation, okay, then what does a Dirichlet boundary condition mean? What does a Newman boundary condition mean? Yeah, Dirichlet boundary condition means you're fixing. You not you you are setting the deformation, for example, to zero, right? You are kind of fixing a location on the uh, on the solid, right? Not allowing it to move. How about Newman boundary condition? Mm. Fixed, stress. fixed stress, right. So basically, the derivative of deformation is strain, right? Mm -hmm. And the strain and the stress usually have a fixed relationship. So basically, if you know how much stress you're applying to a particular boundary, you know how much strain it has along that boundary. So setting this, it's setting, uh, for example, if you know a, a, a surface is uh, a free, right? Nothing is touching it. You know a particular directional derivatives are equal to zero, right? So, so this is uh, when Newman boundary condition comes to play. And then you can also know there are different types of Newman boundary conditions. For example, for heat equation, what you have on the, I mean, this is in 1D, right? For in, in three dimensions, you cannot actually specify the derivative of the temperature in the tangential directions to the surface. That's uh, actually going to be part of the solution. You can only specify the normal directional derivatives. For example, if you insulate a surface, you will only know that the normal derivative of temperature is equal to zero because there is no heat transfer on that direction. 
there can still be heat transfer along the surface but not into or out of the surface so so for for 3d what you have is what grad u dot with the surface normal is equal to zero that's typically what it means by a zero Newman boundary condition in multiple dimensions all right okay any questions on this So now we come to the point of uh, wondering how do we enforce these kind of boundary conditions in finite difference. Well, the original boundary condition is actually very easy. We just uh, fix that value, take that value away from the set of unknowns. And there we also need one less equation to worry about. Right? How about a Newman boundary condition? That's not so easy right although we know du dx we actually don't know the value of u at that point it's still unknown what the value of u is so what do you, what do we do yes um, can you say that uh, u at one is equal to u at the, the one before it? oh okay good point so can i say that uh, uh, so if let me let me use a different color if du dx at x equal to 1 is equal to 0 let me draw the solution here uh, this is x equal to 1 can i say that um, can i say that uh, it's uh, it leads to un minus 1 is equal to un if we do that, that is practically saying that I'm approximating this boundary condition by that this, right? I'm approximating the derivative by this one and setting that to zero. All right. But the problem is, again, I have a what? First of all, the discretization right can I do better than that yeah I can actually just uh, plug in this one right and instead of saying that equal to zero I can say this is equal to zero right that's one way of discretizing the Newman boundary condition at uh, for actually for any equation but for a second order derivative, there is actually a pretty smart way of discretizing the Newman boundary condition. That is actually using both the equation and the boundary condition. So instead of uh, this, which gives us a first order discretization, we say that u n plus 1 minus u n minus 1 over 2 delta x is equal to 0. You may say, wait a minute, we don't have u n plus 1, right? u n plus 1 is outside the domain. But wait a little bit, because I don't have u n plus 1, but I can actually cancel u n plus 1 by invoking also the differential equation. The differential equation tells me dun dt is equal to kappa times the second order derivative, which actually can be discretized if we knew un plus 1. So un plus 1 plus un minus 1 minus 2un divided by delta x squared. Okay, so we have this equation and we have this boundary condition, which gives us u n plus 1 is equal to u n minus 1, right? And then we plug that relationship to actually cancel this u n plus 1, which we don't have. As a result, what I get is du n dt is equal to uh, 2 times u n minus 1 minus 2 times u n divided by delta x squared. Right? Does it make sense? And this can be used uh, for any Newman boundary condition. If this is equal to a, un plus 1 just equal to un plus 1 plus 2 delta x times a, right? 
and basically then you have a plus 2 delta x times a over here okay so that's a uh, that's a way to discretize the Newman boundary condition without what we call increasing the stencil size of the operator right without actually extending the relay the extending the ODEs um, the dependency of an OD to beyond the immediate neighbor so this equation still only depends on un and un minus one all the previous equations all depends only on itself and its immediate neighbors which is actually not true if you use the uh, this discretization here all right any questions nope okay